Hey, Nish here, and today I've got a video in this very pretty but slightly noisy location talking about some tips and tricks that can help you get the most out of your Kobo e-reader. I'm going to be specifically showing you some stuff on the Libra H2O, but I think a lot of this stuff should generalize to most devices. Now, the first thing you've probably done when you've got your device is connected to Wi-Fi and got some software updates. My first little tip is to make sure you turn Wi-Fi off and you can use airplane mode because I found that this can conserve the battery quite a lot. The other thing you're going to first want to have a look at is some of the settings. Now, there's a couple of settings on Kobo devices I think are worth having a think about maybe because they affect the experience of reading quite a lot. Obviously, you have to have a go at using the device and figure out the best setting for you. But those are, um, for example, if you've got buttons, you can decide which button does what. So you can decide what's more comfortable for you, which one to advance the page on. And the other main thing is the zones on the touch screen. So this is where you touch on the screen to, for example, bring up the settings menu or to go back and forth on pages. It's, so it's quite handy that they give you these features to kind of customize the usability of the device. Now, before I move on to some more juicier tips, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it helps the videos get out there and to more people, and I'd really appreciate it. So, if those settings weren't um, you know, spicy enough for you, what you can do is check out the developer mode. Now, don't worry, this doesn't involve coding or hacking. It's really quite simple to get into. All you have to do is go on to the search bar on the device and type in dev mode on. Nothing will happen instantaneously, but what you'll see is there'll be a new little option in the menu called beta features. Now in this menu, firstly, there's a couple settings, one of which I like is the large print mode. One of my gripes with the Kobo Libre H2O was that the dictionary and footnotes had a very small fixed text size, which I wasn't a huge fan of. So this large print mode enables you to increase the size of all text on the device, including those dictionary and footnotes, and I found that can bring it to a, a more comfortable level. Apart from that, there's a web browser. So this is great if, um, well, okay, the e-reader browsing, ex browsing experience is not fantastic, but it's usable. But the reason why it's great is because it lets you download books to your e-reader you know, without the use of cables, which is quite handy. The other thing, there's a vocabulary builder. I think this is akin to what the Kindles have by default. Uh, for some reason, it's still in the beta features. I've not used it personally, but could be handy if you want to learn some new words while you're reading. Lastly, there's a few games. So not only can you read books, you can also play a few games. There's Sudoku Solitaire and a, a little block game. Nice little handy feature. To be honest, I think these beta features are quite great. I don't know why they're hidden away in this developer mode. Um, they should just be standard, but very useful to enable and use those. Now, if those settings still aren't enough for you, I came across a thing called Kobo Patch, and this has been put together by like a hacking modding community, and it's a little bit complicated. You do have to edit some notepad files and flash stuff and copy over files to edit things, but they've basically found ways to edit almost anything you can imagine. So if you really want to tweak what the margins are like and what headers show, you can do things like that. Um, I'll leave a link to it um, if it's something that sounds, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, obviously it's not for everyone. My next thing is a very quick tip, um, and it's to do with the backlight intensity. So there's a nice little feature where you can change the backlight intensity by swiping on the left side of the screen. It's just a very quick way to do it without having to tap into the menu. Uh, you might have to enable this in the settings. I find that very useful when you're moving between rooms or moving between indoors and outdoors, um, because not all the devices have automatic backlight intensity adjustment. Now, moving away from the device itself, if you have an ebook library on your computer, a program I'd really recommend checking out is called Calibre or Calibre. And it's a program that allows you to manage all the ebooks on your PC. You can like watch a folder, and if you download new books in there or add them to your library, then when you connect your device to the computer, you can see what books are already on there and with one click transfer all the ones that aren't. Really handy. Uh, great piece of free software. I, I can make a tutorial about it if it's, if it's something people are interested in, but it's mostly sort of self-explanatory. My last little thing is I'd really recommend getting a little tablet stand like this, which isn't quite configured right. I picked this up for just a few pounds and it's handy to prop up your e-reader. Why would you want to do this? Like say if you're eating or drinking and you want to place this on a table, then you can read it by tapping away on the pages. And it's just one of those things I think it improves the comfort and usability of an e-reader even more than it already has good, oh my god, what are these even words, even more comfort and usability than it has, because this is one of my favorite things about e-readers, as, as I've talked about in another video. So a really handy little purchase, I think only a few pounds, probably on eBay and that kind of thing. Highly recommend. And I think that is everything. It, yeah. Yeah, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. Um, hope these tips and tricks are useful. Do leave your own tips and tricks in the comments because this is not an exhaustive list and I'm sure I myself and the wider community could learn if you have something to share. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.